Today, Intel revealed their Alchemist graphics cards with enough details that I feel we can start to discuss if it's going to live up to the hype. Indeed, whether you go back half a year, a year, or even 1.5 years, I have been consistently leaking Alchemist pictures, development progress, and performance targets. I would say that my information has always suggested performance around an RTX 3070 with a full software stack to hopefully rival AMD and NVIDIA, but that the development was really always a struggle. Now, whether you think I've been hyping or downplaying XE, I would just point out that I think I've been in the middle. A, a lot of people, even some of my best sources even, have been saying that ARC would never successfully launch, and that's not true. And others have sometimes, not as often as the other group, but sometimes even been acting like Intel's going to raffle stomp everyone. And for me, this reveal, much like my reporting over the last 1.5 years, seems to be in the middle of those two outcomes. Indeed, this reveal has been a long time coming, almost too long. Intel claimed ARC would launch in quarter one for a while, and really what we're seeing is a paper launch on March 30th, which is just about the latest you can wait to launch this lineup without being accused of misleading investors, and I'm sure some will still accuse them of that, maybe fairly. But honestly, one thing I want to say right away about this whole reveal is still... Still, something just seems off about Alchemist. I appreciated the 20-minute runtime that didn't waste my time, and the software stack actually appears more fully featured than I was worried it might be. But then, looking at their software presentation, yeah, it has in-game recording like Relive and Shadowplay, and the overclocking menu looks great. But doesn't it seem a little too simple? I don't know, maybe there's just a lot of bloat left in NVIDIA and AMD's software, but this just seems a little bare bones for how many features it says it has. Why aren't there more detailed graphs of performance? Why aren't there more toggles like AMD and NVIDIA offers you? And why do I just get the feeling that this presentation is nothing more but a render, that the menu they have right now in their labs looks nothing like that? And one thing I really don't get about today's presentation, although I do get why they might not tell you the entire specs of the desktop lineup before it comes out, I don't see why they can't surely show some sort of quick demo of someone literally playing on a real desktop next to them with a keyboard and mouse, the real ARC desktop graphics card plugged in like Raja Kadori showed Vega seven months before it came out playing Doom Eternal in 4K. That was seven months before Vega came out. Uh, you don't need to give us exact averages of performance, but why can't they show like Elden Ring in 1440p or something? That's just... I don't know, maybe it's a marketing decision to not show more than they need to before they're really close to a launch, but it just comes off as a red flag to me either way. And uh, there are other red flags as well, and one that I want to come clean about that I've known about for a while. I have had this entire time I've been leaking Alchemist information, and still have to this day, multiple sources saying that the top desktop cards may not even launch until quarter three, 2022. I'm not kidding. Heck, one source back in February told me that the standard reference cooler for ARC may not launch until quarter four after the AIB models. Now, I couldn't get any of my other sources to really confirm that, and it just seemed crazy to me, even if this source is a pretty legendary track record with me at this point. And in fact, that ARC launch video I did a month ago the folder was literally titled Arc Launches Quarter 4, but I pivoted the overall scope of that video to not say that quite yet. And I am not like literally confirming today that I think the reference Alchemist cards, you know, the ones that I've leaked for over like almost a year now and video cards is confirmed and other people have started to confirm that that more simple standard looking reference design with two fans. I'm not saying for sure that's going to come out in quarter four, but I've just got to say when I see these laptop launches as stated as coming out early summer and then a limited edition desktop card coming out summer. So to me, that sounds like quarter three. It kind of sounds like what that one source told me in February may be plausible. No, that we're going to get low end laptop first. Then we're going to get probably low end desktop and then high end laptop in early summer and then mid to late summer we're going to get a special edition reference card that might tell you that after that founders special edition we might get the actual reference card in quarter four so i would just say that you know 
the laptop launch is starting to roll out now, but we shouldn't place any bets on when the high-end desktop is coming out, except that it will probably be out by the end of summer, and it's becoming pretty obvious to me what's going on with Intel drivers, that they have had 96 execution unit models in integrated graphics for a while, that the drivers work... Frankly, not good, honestly. There's been plenty of game launches like Halo Infinite and Elden Ring that had garbage performance on Intel, which is just unacceptable. But that by about now, they've optimized the drivers enough that they feel like they've, they're going to get the most out of the 128 execution unit lowly clocked laptop models. And that within a month or so, they'll be able to do the highly clocked desktop and then the more higher end laptop. And basically, I think that this slow rollout really seems to be them basically betting when they believe they'll have drivers optimized enough to get the most out of the higher up scaling products and... I think this starts to explain why there's always been this dissonance between what to expect out of Alchemist performance, right? You hear some, I, I've been very clear that I am 100% sure their top cards on desktop will be above the 3060, but besides that, I mean, honestly, to this day, I have one of my other best sources telling me that all he can confirm is between a 3060 and 3070 is all that can be promised, maybe a bit above that. All of these ranges, I think, come from all of these various samples being tested, and if you really look at the gap, 57% isn't that much when you consider the performance is probably still all over the place in testing with the higher end models and I think that explains what's going on here Intel's taking forever not because they don't have the cards I have documentation proving Intel has already produced a lot of the high end dies I, I think it really is just the slow rollout of optimizing the drivers until they're sure they can get at least 80% of the performance out of the top model and uh, yeah I don't know. It might be a bit like Vega, where we saw performance a little all over the place at launch, or maybe it won't be. Maybe the reason the desktop's taking so long to come out is that they want to make sure it's not like Vega's launch. But if things turn out well, how well should we expect the top desktop cards to perform, right? Some people might say that they really didn't tell us that much today, but... I actually think Intel revealed enough in the, some of their slides for us to reverse engineer and say some early things about if the performance is living up to what me and some others have been leaking for about a year now. And I want to talk about what their slides really prove about ARC's performance if it turns out well, but first an ad from a sponsor. I may not be able to stop Reesey from monitoring me, but I can protect myself while I'm online. Today's video is brought to you by Atlas VPN. It's 2022, and I would assume you want to start the year off right, don't you? Well, the wrong way would be letting anyone who cares to, and a lot of organizations and governments do care to, monitor your online actions, track your data, and prevent you from enjoying streaming content that's usually arbitrarily locked away from being watched in all regions of the world. Atlas VPN protects you from all of that and even blocks ads and malware for you, including malicious links and ad trackers. Actively tries to get you the lowest price a company offers, subverting their attempts to charge you more based on location or operating system. And and it works on unlimited devices. And all of this for that price is done without massively slowing down your internet. Right now, Atlas VPN is running a huge discount. You can get three years of Atlas VPN for just $1.99 a month if you click the link in the description. It even comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. That's right. Moore's Law Z fans get access to this special deal. And clicking this link really does help the channel. You can't stop your dog from watching you, but you can't protect yourself online if you use Atlas VPN, and you can also help Moore's Law is Dead. Click the link in the description, help Moore's Law is Dead, and help yourself in 2022 with Atlas VPN today. All right then. Indeed, the most fun thing I thought we could do today is take a look at the slides with actual frame rates on them and see if the performance Intel is telling us today lines up with what's been being leaked for over a year now. Now, the first thing I did was focus on the A370M that Intel themselves mostly focus on in today's presentation and try to discern if the desktop A370 will be something that might interest you at all. And, you know, if I just do a simple average of teraflops over bandwidth, with, I believe the desktop version of SOC2, the little die, could be about 60% stronger than the mobile version. Now, this comes from assuming that the charts 
Uh, start at zero here, by the way, and I averaged Wolfenstein, Hitman 3, and Strange Brigade with the following assumptions. That the desktop model can hit 2.4 gigahertz, which is what I've been leaking for a while. And frankly, we already know that the integrated graphics on Intel's 10 nanometer can hit 2.4 gigahertz. So I don't think that's crazy to assume at all. And that also, besides the higher clocks, almost 50% faster than the mobile variant, that we can also say that the 96-bit bus will bring over 50% more bandwidth with especially if it uses 16 gigabit per second memory instead of the 14 gigabit per second of the mobile variant which i know from numerous pieces of documentation i have from inside intel that these graphics cards can support at least 16 gigabit per second memory so i'm just going to assume that and so if i look at intel's charts and then i think i can agree with notebook check that the 96 execution unit iris that intel was comparing the a370 m2 is around an mx450 in performance which again uh, it, it is a crapshoot trying to prove this. I mean, if you look at the benchmarks of mobile graphics cards, you can see they're often using Tiger Lake or Alder Lake graphics to represent the 96 execution unit model. Oftentimes, the MX450 is anything from 12 to 28.5 watts. At the end of the day, I think it's fair to say that on average, the 96 execution unit model in Alder Lake, not Tiger Lake, is around a desktop GTX 1050 in performance. Uh, you know, which again, you know, the MX450 is kind of just a 64 bit 1650. So that, so that makes some sense. And so, so at the end of the day, if you take these averages of performance, which I know Intel says up to double, but that's for like one or two examples, and there are some that are only 30%, let's just say it's 60%. At the end of the day, if this mobile graphics card is 60% better than a GTX 1050, then it's almost RX 470 performance. And that puts the mobile A370M around a... Well, maybe a bit below a desktop GTX 1650, which makes sense and lines up with what we expected. And then if we adjust for, again, the 96-bit bus, which I was the first and I think only person to confirm that there wasn't some discrepancy, that really Intel was smart enough to give a mobile-focused graphics card a little extra bit bus width in case they wanted to make a decent desktop card with enough RAM, <coughs> AMD, that if we just look at the 50% bigger bus, the faster memory, the oh, around 50% faster clocks, and I think we can get something even 60% better than that in desktop, depending on if Intel wants it to be a 75 or like 90 watt card with a six pin, then yeah, I we get to, again, add another 63% or so, just below a 1660 Super, which has been their target as has been previously leaked the whole time. And the numbers they showed today line up with what's been leaked previously by me and others. And again, even if we're being conservative, which we should be, and we, we don't, you know, we don't assume that actually the mobile variant is 60% better. Let's say it's just 50% better than the Iris graphics. Then we assume that the desktop version is only 50% better instead of 60%, you know, so 1.5 times 1.5. We see it's about 2.25 times better than a 1050. And again, we get to write around an RX 590. And so I'm sorry if I've thrown a lot of numbers at you, but there's links in the description so you can look at them yourselves. Basically, I think in a month or two, Intel will launch what is effectively a 6 gigabyte RX 590 that uses half the energy of an RX 590, if not less than half as much, actually. And it'll probably be a decent desktop card for about $150 to $200. And I base that pricing on the information I have that has been consistently telling me that Intel wants to buy market share, that even if this thing launches later than they wanted, they will price it where it needs to be because they know they need to make a slash, a splash. And with where prices are going, I think the six gigabyte card needs to be, well, I wouldn't be surprised if it's $150. And so I think that'll be fine. And their numbers support that what we've been leaking, what I've been leaking about performance this whole time lines up, unless they're just completely lying today. <laughs> and so if the little dg2 graphics cards line up with what's been leaked based on today's information what about the big cards well if i extrapolate again just basic stuff based on teraflops and increased bandwidth we could see my assumptions then land this top desktop xe graphics card squarely in between the rtx 3070 and 3070 ti which is exactly what i've been saying for a year and a half and i guess based on that information i would say no, I can't promise it will perform that well. We'll need to see what happens with drivers and if they can really scale it that well. But the math is there. This isn't a ridiculous hope that 
Really, Intel may launch some sub-$500 16 gigabyte 3070 or 3070 Ti competitor. The math and even the slides they've shown today support they may be able to do this. Um, well, then what's going on with some of my best sources still saying all they can promise is in between a 3060 and 3070? Well... There's been a lot of assumptions in today's video. I assume it can hit 2.4 gigahertz, which I know the 10 nanometer integrated graphics can, but those are a lot fewer execution units than what's going to be in these desktop cards. So, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it doesn't hit 2.4 gigahertz. And I also assumed 18 gigabit per second memory, which I know they can support based on internal documentation from within Intel. But there's no promising they'll go with that. Although, at this point, seeing the 6500 XT with 18 gigabit, I think they will. But yeah, if I bump down the clocks a bit and the memory speed, then an IC this lands, well, slightly below a 2080 Ti, actually, which puts it, yeah, a bit below a 3070, probably around a 3060 Ti or 6700 XT, which those tech power-up numbers aren't perfect. They're just rough, you know, numbers to go by easily. So, yes, at the end of the day, then, what I'm standing by is a bit above the 3070 or a bit below Roughly around an RTX 3070, which is what's been said the whole time. Their numbers support it, even with red flags. If we are conservative, that supports it. And so I have to just say then, overall, I'm not really worried about ARC meeting performance expectations. As long as you're not expecting it to beat the 3070 Ti. I just think that the problem, it's, it's taking too long to release. And I mean, look, XE super sampling looks cool. The encoding and AI capabilities look great, but there's other, you know, when you see that this thing isn't going to support HDMI 2.1 like RDNA 2 and Ampere already do and that they maybe will be like DisplayPort 2.0 ready, I am forced to keep concluding that this thing was designed a while ago and took a while to finish and this was really supposed to come out in mid-2021 or would have the latest HDMI and after all, I've had pictures since then. So I really think they meant for this card to come out last year. That's why some of it is a little all over the place and some of its IP looks outdated. But I don't know. At this point, ARC really does feel like a firm quarter two or quarter three product that will launch just one or two quarters before RDNA 3 and Lovelace. And again, that's probably why they're only shipping four million cards this year. It's going to be stuffing the laptop channels during the summer. This narrow amount of time where they're competitive, launching products that were really supposed to be out a year ago. And then, well, it's probably going to be trounced by Lovelace. But you know, at least Battle Mage is expected already next year and expected to be much more competitive. This is kind of the beta release for Intel's move into high-end graphics. And Battle Mage? Well, that'll be for another video. Make sure you subscribe to the Moore's Law is Dead YouTube channel. Check that you're subscribed. YouTube unsubscribes you all the time. Ring the bell button so you don't miss the upcoming videos. And, you know, if you can support us, just 2 $4 a month gets you access to the Moore's Law is Dead Patreon, a set of tiers where you can submit questions to me and guests, get early ad-free access to Broken SailCon, which one will be coming out in under 24 hours from now. And you'll get that early and ad-free if you're at the proper Patreon tier. So we really can't do this without our patrons. Support us there if you can. Give us a super thanks, you know, on YouTube if you want to support us that way. Or, you know, support our sponsors if you need any of the products that uh, they are having me advertise to you because, you know, supporting my sponsors supports me as well if you need those products. But I'm um, starting to ramble. I hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, thank you for watching. <laughs>